Yes, the Razer Blade is a gaming laptop, but Razer goes through painstaking effort to make sure that its flagship laptop is not just another gaming laptop. In fact, coming back to this design in 2020, it might not be as striking as it was when it launched a couple years ago, but spending some time with it again, I was reminded of just how much this stands out from a lot of the competition in a lot of different ways. The design of the Razer Blade is more about what it avoids than what it actually does. And you'll know what I mean if you set this thing next to a laptop from the Predator line or the Alienware line, it's really obvious right away. This is a normal laptop, for lack of a better term, and it totally knows it. The focus here is all on straight lines and simple design language. It's more in line with a MacBook than a traditional gaming laptop. There are two exceptions to that rule, of course, and they both involve glowing lights. You've got the green snake logo on the lid, which still glows in the dark, and of course, the RGB backlighting on the keyboard. With 12 levels of brightness control and endless customization options, Razer still does RGB backlighting better than anyone else. And speaking of the keyboard, Razer has finally made a design change here that I have been bothered by for years. And we're talking about the keyboard layout. They've finally given in and gotten rid of those full-size arrow keys and instead used kind of the typical half-size up and down arrow keys. But the result is that the shift key and the question mark are now next to each other like a normal keyboard layout. And now I don't have to struggle with that every single time I sit down and type at this computer. And for me, I do that all day. So this was a huge, huge relief. And Razer does intend you to use the blade for more than just gaming. That's really clear. It's more than just the excellent keyboard and touchpad that they use here. It's also in just the size of the Razer Blade. It only weighs four and a half pounds and you can sit this thing next to a Dell XPS 15 or a 16 inch MacBook Pro and it clearly fits into that same size category. It has all the bells and whistles of a premium laptop too, including the IR camera above, which lets you do Windows Hello facial recognition. Even the port selection here lends itself to somebody who wants to use this laptop for more than just gaming. In addition to your normal mix of USB-A, USB-C, and HDMI, you also get a Thunderbolt 3 port here and a full-size SD card slot. Razer knows its target audience, and obviously that includes people who will use those types of ports on a daily basis. When it comes to performance, what you get on a spec sheet can be really misleading. There's a lot more going on here than just listing off the processor, the graphic card, the RAM, and that kind of thing. The way that a system actually integrates those components can produce wildly different performance results. And the Razer Blade is kind of an interesting example of that. But let's get this out of the way first. As a gaming laptop, which that's what this is, it's fantastic. It uses the new NVIDIA RTX 2080 Super Max Q graphics card, which is the top of the line for these thin and light gaming laptops in 2020. The Super in the name of the graphics card really only amounts to about 5% of an increase in performance over the previous models, give or take, depending on the game. But the gameplay experience that you get on the Razer Blade is as much about the screen as it is about the graphics card. This particular unit I have here came with a 300 hertz refresh rate screen at 1080p resolution. And even though you might like the sound of a 4K OLED panel, which Razer also offers, if gaming is your main prerogative, this is the one you want. 300 hertz might sound like overkill, but it basically ensures that your GPU will never be bottlenecked by your screen. And all that extra headroom means you won't experience all that nasty screen tearing that you get in some gaming laptops. It's nice to know that even lighter games like CSGO or Rocket League, which actually caps at 250 frames per second, still won't even come close to that upper limit. The Razer Blade kept up with beefier laptops like the Acer Predator Triton 500 in pretty much every game I tested at max settings. And keep in mind, those are two laptops with pretty much identical components. In Fortnite, we're talking about 110 frames per second. In Battlefield 5, 98 and even 60 frames per second in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It's still sort of mind-boggling to me that a laptop this size can produce those types of frame rates. 